Oh, fish on. Whoa, guys, look at this freaking giant. This is definitely my biggest one this year. Hey, what's up everyone? You guys been asking this for a while. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how I do the drop shot fishing for crappies. Let's do it. In today's videos, I'm gonna show you my secret personal rig to do drop shot fishing. This is really, really effective in fall, especially for crappies, for bass, especially when they are gonna be roaming. A lot of the shell flats, cruising specific points. There's gonna be a lot less weeds, so you technically cover a lot of water with drop shot. You don't have to finesse fish a drop shot. I power fish the drop shot either vertically or I cast it. And the reason why I am able to power fish the drop shot rig is because I use two hooks and I like to use Aberdeen uh, hooks. Uh, I like to have one very low for those fish who's at the bottom, and I like to have one pretty high in the water column so I could effectively cover water. Let's get on the water today so I can show you guys this rig. Let's talk about my gear today. So let's start with the rod. The rod, I like to have a medium action fast tip rod. Today I'm using the Defy Black. This is the seven foot one inch fast tip. I got size 3000 reel from 13 Fishing. This is the Creed GT spooled on very thin braid, this is 10 pound braid line. The reason why I like to have thin braid line is because it could cut through the water column a lot easier, especially for a kayak angler when I get blown out of a place. I want my lure to the bottom as quick as possible. So that's why I opt for the main line as braid. In addition, the braid, it has no stretch. So when you're actually fishing with the braid at your main line, there's gonna be a lot of sensitivity that's gonna transfer up to your fishing rod. Back to the fishing rod for a second. The most important thing when you guys fish braid is to have metallic insert guides because that will also double up that sensitivity and it allowed all the sensitivity to travel up your a blank of your rod and to your hand so you know when that fish has strike your lure. And of course, when you guys get, get to uh, your main line, you always need some sort of floral carbon when you're doing drop shot fishing because that is the name of the game. You want to minimize the line visibility. So today I'm using Cast King Floral Coat. I have 10 pound floral line right here and I'm gonna tie a uni to uni knot to my braid line. For a mount of leader, I like to usually do like maybe um, two yards. So the next thing we need to do is tie on some hooks. These are Aberdeen hooks from VMC. I just use size one or size two and we're gonna tie a polymer knot. The first one you need to tie, you gotta tie up really high up in the hook. So this is what you need to do. I can't really give you the exact formula because you gotta be out in the water and figure out where, where the high water column that you need the top hooks. But if you guys just need a rule of thumb when you're just testing out the waters, I like to put this guy maybe around 16, uh, 16 inches up, uh, from the bottom. So this is, that's what I'm doing right now. So I, I thread it through get me some good amount of line, all right? Then you tie your polymer knot. And after you tie the polymer knot, this is really, really important, guys. And, I, and, I, and I'm gonna show you. All right, so once you get your, your knot tied, you're gonna have a tag end that you gotta tie your next hook. Before you tie your next hook, you have to take the tag end and place it from the top of the hook, all right? When I say top, if you guys look at my hook right now, I'll put a horizontal, right? You see this right here? The hook, this is how your drop shot hook should be uh, hanging. The horizontal like this with the hook uh, on the top. So what you want to do is you take this tag end, you want to take this and thread it through the eyelet, and then pull it through. And when you do that, this, this is what's going to happen. See that? When the weight's pulling down, your hook will always face up. So when you actually set the hook, See that? You actually pull the hook into the fish mouth. If the hook is upside down, you, you, you try to set the hook, you may not, and I could say with a 70 to 80% chance that you won't hook that fish. And then the last hook, again, it's up to how you guys are gonna do it. Uh, and with worry fish, if you have a lot of structure, you might have to put it higher, but I'll be, I'll be fishing drop-offs and isolated humps today. So I could put it anywhere between six inches and under. So let me put on my next hook and tie that polymer knot. All right, again, you put the tag in to the eyelet. And lastly, you wanna put your hook on. I like to put on like maybe a quarter ounce. I'm not like the other bass anglers that says you, got, you should use the lightest, lightest weight as possible. I like to put this thing down because I'm, fish, I'm fishing specific water columns. So 
I like to have the lure down as quick as possible, especially if you're a kayak angler, you want it down, down there. If I really want a light as possible, I wouldn't even be drop shot fishing. I would probably be doing a jig head, a uh, high low jig head uh, fishing rig instead, which I can show you guys next time. That is a very effective lure, especially in fall too, when you're combing a water column and you're actively swimming a lure. But today we want to keep this weight at the bottom. So the lures I'll be using today for drop shot fishing, for crappies or any type of fish, I like to use minnow type baits. So we're using power bait, they're pro twitch minnow. I got white, if that's the only color you guys can find, that's all the color you only need. And I have something a little darker, something more of a bluegill pattern, a perch color, because in South Jersey, that's what we have a lot of. You guys need to pick the right colors for uh, your area to match the hatch. Another cool thing about white is you could always dye it. I got a bottle of spike it garlic. So sometimes I like to do is dye only half of your lure so that it's basically a fire tail and it causes a lot of commotion. So guys, there's a huge advantage of why I like to use these Aberdeen hooks. And the reason why is you're allowed to, you're, I'm not gonna nose hook any of my baits. When you nose hook something, you're gonna foul hook it. And look at those fish just hanging out right there. That's a lot of fish right there. Anyway, I like to thread these lures right along the shank and all the way to the top. There's a couple reasons why. The first reason is, the look at the hook. It's in the middle of the lure. If you're nose hooking, you, ho you hook it right there. Chances are sometimes when they're short strike, you're not gonna get that good hook set. And two, if you actually nose hook it, what if your lure spins around and hook itself like that, you know, and tangle up? You know, sometimes that one cast is really important and th that fouled up hook right there, may not cause the fish to bite or you can't do the hook set and then you lose your fish of the day. So that's, this is why I love Aberdeen hooks. And lastly, when pickerels hit these guys, you know, if you have those small little mosquito hooks or you know, those drop shot hooks, they're gonna bite the whole thing. You're gonna lose every single pike pickerels ever. So that's why I like to use these guys. You set the hook, their mouth is pretty much away from the hook if they don't, didn't swallow it yet. You guys set the hook in time and you can land a good size pickerel. If you haven't watched some of my pickerel videos, you know, check that out the top right hand corner because I caught my biggest pickerel ever using this method. Here's my computer pleated rig, the top lure, bottom lure, and the weight. The next step you need to do is locate some fish. And it's really important to have a good fish finder and also have a map. So if you guys are kayak anglers, you guys are uh, boaters, and you have a Lorance that have a chart plotter, which is basically a map and a fish finder, you guys have a capability to log your sonar. Make sure you guys log your sonar. Basically, the Lorance, they have a, a website that allows you to create a free account, upload your sonar, ma uh, sonar logs, and create maps. This is what I've done here. That's how I got those depth charts. Look at that. Look at that be beautiful thing right here. I have a point there. That's where I'm going to fish. I got isolated high specific areas, you know? That's where all the good fish going to be at. And another key is, especially in fall time, if you find a lot of fish at 12 foot, like from 10 to 12 foot, chances are, if there's other places that have 10, 10 to 12 foot in the other part of the lake, th that's where the fish gonna be. So being able to identify where those crappies are and create a pattern, you're gonna catch more fish. C coming up with my first structure right here, it looks like a fish is hanging out right here. He's not too close to it, that's why it's like a dark blue, but it, I'm sure he'll see this. I'm fishing actually really, really low. I'm fishing 10 feet of water, but I might have to put one of my drop shot, the, the higher one, way high up in the water column. Predator fish like to be a little lower and they like to look up. Oh, fish on, oh, fish off. Oh, no, look, fish still on, fish still on. Two of them hit, whoa, guys, look at this freaking giant. Holy smokes. Dude, something hit my top one and something hit my bottom one. Wow, guys, this is a monster. This is definitely my biggest one this year. That thing's bigger than my fish finder. Let me, let me put this right by my foot. Look at that. I mean, I have Asian feet, but you know, holy smokes. Dude, look at that nice, big, black crappie. Bigger than my hand. Peace out, man. Peace out. That's some more fish right there. Oh, that's a good fish right there. And it went down. It's looking at my lure. I have a feeling that it's going to strike soon, hopefully. Ah, come on, buddy. You know you want it. 
Jimmy's right here trying to catch you. You want, you want to be on YouTube, right? Right? Come on. Come on, buddy. Be on YouTube. You can be famous. I promise I won't eat you, but guys, I found them. They're here. Look, look at that. Here, I'm going to lift up higher and just drop back down. Maybe I could uh, get some of them active fish. The one is a higher water column, usually more active. And I think I just, oop, I just got them to go down. But that's, this is a thick amount of fish. I just don't know why. It, it usually probably just means not feeding for them at the moment. So I kind of like using drop shot fishing because it force feeds them. And there we go. Wow, look at that. These big crappies right here, just schooling up. I like the spot already. He wasn't big as the first one, but there's still plenty of fish out there to be caught. So let's see if we catch a bigger one. Tell you what, man, today the sky is so bright. I'm burning up. Oh. Yeah, this is gonna be tough. I haven't fished here since, let me think. Oh, what, what is this? Wow, slab, holy smokes. Look at that, dude. Man, what a crappy. Come back in there, peace out. So there you have it guys, the drop shot rig for crappies and any other species like bass, they will also hit it. This fall is going to be awesome. So if you guys want to give it a shot, definitely give the double drop shot rig a try. If you guys have any questions about this rig, feel free to leave me a comment below. If this is your first time watching my videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because there's going to be a lot more fishing videos this fall. There's going to be some tutorials, how to's, and of course, me out there slaying it. The fish don't wait guys, make sure you guys get out there and catch a fish of a lifetime. Peace out.